Hi everyone, it's William Cornwall. I'm here today to talk to you about virtual agents in Power Platform of Microsoft. I'm going to create a music bot that actually hooks to Spotify and actually allows you to interact and play music from Spotify. This is my little music bot here. Let's have a look at it. I can actually do things like actually type music and it'll actually ask me what would I like to listen to. Um, I might like to listen to an artist today, so I will specify an artist. I'm going to choose Guy Sebastian, local Australian artist. And once I do that, it basically plays Guy Sebastian music directly from Spotify. I can also pause the music. I can resume the music. I can also change over to a playlist if I would like to. Maybe I want to throw my, go my Shazam list. So let's go and have a look at how we actually go and do all this. First thing we're going to do is start uh, with a community plan. The community plan will actually allow you to do all this development without any worries about licensing. Uh, you can't obviously share uh, any of this work outside of this environment. Um, so it's really good for actually learning, developing and figuring out um, all the different things that uh, you can do in the Power Platform. What we're doing here is uh, we've got a um, uh, make.powerapps.com in my community plan environment. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we need to have created a connector to Spotify. There isn't actually a connector out of the box um, to Spotify, but the great thing about the Power Platform uh, environment is that you can actually create um, uh, your own uh, custom connectors to connect to all sorts of different API services. I actually um, obtained um, information on how to actually create this custom connector from that API guy. The API guy is a great um, resource to actually um, help you understand how to go about creating this connector uh, and all sorts of the funky things that you could actually potentially do with it. So in this particular connector, there's a couple of things that you really want to do. Uh, the first thing, obviously, in the general area is basically specify what service you're actually connecting to. In the, in the security area, you basically specify um, how you want to connect to that service, including a client ID and a client secret, which would be explained if you read um, the API guy's uh, um, article. Um, I'll leave the link in below. Um, for that uh, article, uh, plus all the scopes of what you're actually allowing the user to actually do um, with the service. The th third step is basically to set up and create all your actions. Now these are all of the links to the puts and the, and the gets and the uh, posts of, um, of the API. Um, so basically you can interact with the service. So I've got a going to find a whole heap of connections and services to all different sorts of API um, endpoints. Um, like playing music, getting devices, getting the current song, creating playlists, skipping next, skipping previous, getting playlists and so forth. So basically you define all of those things um, including things like your query parameters and, and um, all of the body um, parameters that you want to do with the JSON um, and basically uh, then you can test it out. Once you actually have that custom connector you can actually start using it. So what we're going to do here is go and actually have a look at a solution so I've created a solution. Now the secret of building these bots and interacting with uh, Power Automate to actually action things is to actually create a solution and build everything inside that solution. It keeps everything together, um, all neat and tidy, but it also allows you to, um, to facilitate um, the finding of all that information. So in here I actually have a number of things. I have environment variables, I have um, topics and bot entity information, I have uh, uh, chat bots, I have cloud flows that I've built, um, there's a lot of things in here. So let's have a look at some of this stuff. So the first thing we're going to look at is the actual music bot. What I did was I created a brand new Power, Power Virtual Agent bot um, and out of the box it produces a lot of different um, uh, topics. These topics allow you to actually interact with um, with the with the, the system. I deleted the lessons um, but basically the um, the other topics are out of the box allow you to you know control it you know have a welcome message, have a goodbye message, um, have end of conversation um, surveys all that sort of stuff all built out of the box. 
But I've done is built a couple of additional topics um, in here to allow me to actually integrate and control uh, what we're actually doing. So let's go and have a look at one of the main topics, which is listening to music. So the first thing that you'll notice is that with uh, any topic, there are a series of trigger phrases that you can enter, and you can specify as many or as little as you like. The more probably the better, um, but basically anywhere between five to ten trigger phrases that would allow you to uh, initiate this particular topic if a, if, a, if a user entered that phrase. So if a user enters things like music, Spotify, play some music, listen to music, um, or even... Um, uh, even things like um, you know Spotify, yeah, they will actually enter this topic. So let's go and have a look at the design canvas. So over here, you'll see that we actually have um, uh, really nice, like a user interface that's really quite nice to actually uh, work through. You'll see that the trigger phrases initiate um, here, and then basically uh, the first thing that gets questioned is is a question that says, "What would you like to listen to?" Now I'm using a custom entity which I created. Custom entities allow you to control, um, I suppose, and define uh, natural language um, uh, words that can be used. Um, so I've got here type of music and I've got options that the user could choose as album, artist, playlist. Um, there's also song, but we didn't show that to the user. Um, anything that the user enters will be actually stored in a variable called var music type and it will then be passed on to the conditions below. You'll see that there are a couple of different conditions here. Basically, if the user chose artist, it would go to redirect to the topic of play artist. If they chose music of type album, it would go play album. And if they chose uh, playlist, it would go to the playlist um, uh, topic. If they chose song, um, uh, then basically it would actually say that the type of song is coming soon because I haven't implemented that just yet. So let's go and actually have a look at one of these other topics. So let's have a look at the playing the artist topic. Again, you could come in directly to this particular topic by entering in a phrase like play artist or artist or artist on Spotify. Um, and it would actually bypass that first um, music one and go directly into, um, into this particular topic. So in this particular topic, I've got the key phrases triggering. Um, first thing it's going to ask you is to which artist would you like to listen to. It's going to get the entire response from the user and store that in a variable. It's then going to pass out to Power Automate. Now this is where the power is. Um, so the Power Automate workflow, uh, Cloudflow, will actually uh, take the parameter of the of the entered search term and actually call out to Spotify to actually do a search to see if that artist actually exists. Now, if that artist exists, we'll actually get a URI come back from Spotify, and if it doesn't exist, we'll get nothing come back from Spotify. So in this particular case, if we got nothing, we would actually say, sorry, we couldn't find the artist, please try again. It would actually then take you all the way back up and ask you to, again, what artist would you like to listen to? But if it did find that artist, and you got the URI back from Spotify, it would actually come down here, and it would actually then call out to another Power Automate workflow, which is actually called Play or Pause Playback. And this is actually going to take that URI, and it's actually going to play that music from Spotify. It will then put out a message that says, Found the artist, playing now. If you'd like to pause, type pause, enjoy. Now, I've done the same thing with album, they're pretty much identical, except that instead of searching for artists with Spotify, I'm actually searching for albums, obviously. Um, but playlist is slightly different. With playlists, we're actually going to be a little bit smarter when we start triggering. So when we first trigger, the first thing we're going to do is actually call out to a Power Automate called Get List of Playlists. Now what this is going to do is go off to Spotify and ask for all the playlists that the current user, that's, that's authenticated, actually has. And then it will then actually output that automatically to the user so that we can provide them with um, at least a little bit of preempting of what playlists might be available to them. Then, then they actually then do exactly the same as the other workflows. We actually ask them which of those playlists we'd like to actually play. We store that variable. We do a search with Spotify, searching for the playlist. And then again, if we get that playlist back, we then pass it out to the play or resume playback workflow to actually play that music. 
So let's go over and have a look at the cloud flows. So we have this music bot, but we also have all of these cloud flows. I'm going to do a, a filter on this so that we can see them. Uh, we have a number of cloud flows. As you saw, we saw we had a number for searching them. We had a play and resume playback workflow, but we also had the guest list of playlists workflow. Let's go and have a look at one of these ones, which is the, um, the searchings. So I'm going to go search for album. So in search for album, I'm just going to edit so we can actually see. The first thing that you, you'll notice is that the trigger for this particular Power Automate cloud flow is actually Power Virtual Agents. And this is what actually provides the glue. So when Power Virtual Agent calls out to this workflow, it will pass a parameter of search term. Um, which we saw passed in from the from the actual bot. Um, the first thing it's going to do is call our custom connector to Spotify and call the function or the action search for tracks. It passes in the search term. It specifies that we're actually looking for albums, and it says we want to get one album back. The first thing after that it does is we're going to parse that JSON. So we actually specify what the actual return object from Spotify is going to be. And again, all of this information is available on the um, on the uh, over here in Spotify. Actually, has a web um, API reference guide, so you can get in here and you can find out all sorts of information. So for instance, we're looking at the search um, search API up here. We actually have search for an item and it shows you here what the actual output would look like. So you can actually um, use this to actually find out exactly how you call and how you actually work with all of this information. So back here, uh, after we've parsed that JSON, we can actually then inter interact with that uh, particular stuff. So here we're going to set a variable called var response, and then with each item that comes back from um, from Spotify for each album, um, obviously we only asked for one, so we should only have one. Uh, we are actually going to specify the artists, and then we're actually going to get the URI of the artist object, and we're going to store that in that var response um, variable. And then the last thing we're going to do here is return back to Power Automate a variable called var album URI, that particular URI. So we'll come back over to here and have a look at that particular topic again. So we're in the album topic, and you'll notice that we saw that when we called out to search, we passed in the search term, we passed in the album that the entered the user entered and we pass back a var album URI which we can then use on later on to actually um, play. All good? All right, now the next thing we want to do is actually have a look at um, this particular Cloudflow which is the play and resume playback one. This one here is actually allowing us to um, basically pass a URI to Spotify and again, we actually get two parameters here. We get a pause. Do we want to pause or do we want to play or resume? Um, and so if you say yes, um, then basically you'll just call the pause um, function. If you say no, then it'll call the play function. Uh, and also we specify an optional parameter of the URI. You can either specify the URI or the word none. In this particular case, if it's pause, then we'll call pause, and that's as simple as passing in the environment variable called device ID, what we set up in the solution. And if um, it isn't um, pause, we want to play. So we come down this path here. Now the first thing I'm going to check to see is if the context URI that's been passed in is none. And if it is none, then we just really want to um, pass in just the device ID, and that will resume the music. If it isn't none, then what we want to do is actually pass in the device ID and the context ID so we can start a new song uh, or playlist or album or artist from scratch. And then after all of that's been done, we then return back to Power Automate. In this particular case, we're not passing any parameters back. So that's pretty much how the whole solution works. Um, and again, as you saw, we have um, the ability to test, test the bot and um, and listen to our music. Um, now, the good thing about this is we can publish this bot uh, out to all sorts of different uh, endpoints, like 
um, Facebook or to Twitter or to um, uh, all sorts of different places where you want to publish it. Um, and if you want to, you just come along here and listen to some music. I'm going to ba um, back in black. And with that, I'll see you all guys next time.